Good afternoon folks, 21st Century Caveman here, hope everybody's safe, hope everybody's well. So today we're talking about asbestos, you and the law. So what is asbestos? So it's a naturally occurring mineral made of microscopic fibres and it looks like candy floss. And it's most commonly found in certain rock types and was previously mined for commercial purposes. And the reason it's so useful is because the fibres are soft and flexible and they're resistant to heat, electricity and corrosion. And because of this, it was used extensively in buildings for insulation, flooring and roofing, but mainly as an insulator and for strengthening products. Why is it dangerous? Well, it's only dangerous when it's released into the air and inhaled. And the reason is quite simply because the fibres can become trapped in your lungs and severely damage them over a period of time. Indeed, it can be fatal. Now, asbestos-related diseases aren't typically going to happen overnight. Symptoms will get progressively worse over a period of time. But the point is that when it becomes clear that you've been affected, it's often too late to do anything about it, and there is no way to reverse the damage. Now, although asbestos has been fully banned in the UK since 1999, buildings constructed before the year 2000 may contain materials which contain asbestos because it was widely used in both commercial and domestic buildings uh, before the year 2000. According to the Health and Safety Executive website, asbestos still kills around 5,000 workers each year and about 20 tradesmen die each week as a result of past exposure. So who's most at risk then? Well, it's fair to say that virtually anybody who works in the typical trades would be at risk. So we're talking about electricians, plumbers, carpenters, painters, plasterers, builders, caretakers or facilities managers, and indeed people such as ourselves, DIYs, handymen. I mean, basically anybody who's involved in renovating or managing a property built before the year 2000. Now, we're going to be talking in a lot more detail about domestic premises because this is the main focus of our discussion today. Now, the issue of asbestos does tend to arise when people either want work doing on their property and seek quotes and tradesmen who share their concerns with them, or alternatively, when they move house, have a survey undertaken and risks are identified in the survey report. Now, any suitably qualified or knowledgeable per tradesperson will know about the potential risks and should notify the homeowner accordingly. However, it is fair to say that some contractors may know about the possible risks, but simply choose to ignore them. So, where might it be located then? Now, as previously mentioned, it was commonly used for fireproofing, for insulation, and for strengthening decorative products such as Artex. Now, one of the biggies for homeowners is indeed the Artex type products. So, these are your stipple coatings on walls and ceilings, which most people are becoming better educated about these days. Now, probably the most common are the asbestos cement products, which can be found absolutely everywhere. So they are the hard grey materials, which are basically just ordinary cement mixed with asbestos, and most commonly found as corrugated roofs and as flat sheets used for walls to sheds and garages. In fact, just looking out of my house windows now, I can see at least three asbestos sheds in neighbouring gardens. Now, it was also used in asbestos insulating boards, ceiling tiles, soffits under roofs, old floor tiles, and as pipe lagging. Now, occasionally it was also used as loose fill insulation in lofts and on floorboards. And this is the fluffy insulation, which is blue, grey, or white in colour. It looks like candy floss and it's absolutely lethal. Now, if you've recently purchased a property, then the presence of asbestos containing materials should be picked up by the surveyor. Now, they're not going to be testing it themselves, but they will always make a presumption that it is present and suggest it's tested before you undertake any work. I mean, clearly, the only way you can get a definitive answer is to send off a sample for analysis. If you're not sure whether or not you're dealing with an asbestos product, just ask the property owner how old they are or how long it's been down, if it's 20 years plus, just assume the worst. Now you can buy test kits online. You can take samples yourself and send them off for analysis, but obviously you need to make sure that strict precautions are undertaken and guidance is followed. So what do you do if you suspect that you might have asbestos in your property? 
I mean, the best advice, quite simply, is just leave it alone and don't interfere with it, especially if it appears to be in good working order and the work can be completed without disturbing it. Now, the question does arise as to whether or not you can deal with asbestos type products yourselves. And the answer is yes and no. That depends what you're dealing with and I suppose how brave you're feeling. The answer is yes, you can deal with it yourself if the product isn't damaged or only lightly damaged and sometimes they can be repaired by either sealing or enclosing them in. Now clearly it's imperative that you do wear the right PPE and follow safe working practices. Now the Health and Safety Executive website does provide a number of very useful task sheets regarding this and some very useful advice, tips and tricks. Now you definitely cannot interfere with asbestos containing products if the materials are badly damaged or likely to be disturbed if they're removed. Now there are some other materials which basically can only be removed by a contractor licensed by the health and safety executive and those sorts of materials are typically sprayed asbestos coatings, asbestos lagging, insulation or asbestos boards. Now if you're unsure you can of course contact your local environmental health department who can also advise on appropriately approved contractors. So let's just take a look at the law regarding asbestos in residential properties. So the waste must be taken to a licensed waste facility. It cannot be taken to a local recycling centre and should not be mixed with normal household waste. So now let's just take a look at contractors. Where can you find a licensed contractor? Now, the Environment Agency do produce a register of waste carriers, brokers and dealers who must register and operate within a strict set of rules designed to protect members of the public and the environment and also their employees. Now, these rules do require them to dispose of waste safely and appropriately and also it covers the storage and carriage of those products and the accurate keeping of records for its transfer and disposal. For example, legislation includes the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974, which protects employees from risk associated with their work-related activities, and Section 3 of that legislation protects householders from risks relating to work carried out in their own homes. You've also got the Control of Asbestos Reg Regulations 2012, which apply to prevent or reduce the exposure and the spread of asbestos, and also they provide for dealing with accidents, incidents and emergencies relating to asbestos. So basically it's fair to say that all asbestos containing materials do need to be disposed of legally as hazardous trade waste and cannot be disposed at your local recycling centre. Now, if you pay a tradesperson to work in your home or garden, it's their legal responsibility to remove it and dispose of it safely. So, it should go without saying that all suitably qualified and experienced contractors should be aware of any potential risks, but it's also important to make it crystal clear that if there is a foreseeable risk of asbestos in your property and you fail to inform a contractor who then suffers damage or an injury due to your negligence if failed to tell them, then you could get sued under the tort of negligence. So what do you need to do to perform your duty of care then? So occupiers of domestic properties have a duty of care when disposing of household waste from that property under section 34 subsection 2a of the Waste Duty of Care Code of Practice dated November 2018 and under this legislation homeowners must take all reasonable measures to ensure that their waste is only transferred to an authorised person so there is a legal requirement to do that. Now it's important to make it clear that you're still responsible for your waste even after it's been collected by a contractor so before you go booking the cheapest man with a van from Facebook or Gumtree, you must seek evidence which confirms that they're a legitimate company. Because if they don't dispose of the waste safely and appropriately, then the fines involved will cost you considerably more than if you've got a company to dispose of it legally in the first place. 
and the result is of course that you could receive a very hefty fine indeed. Now, how would you make sure that you keep within the law and make sure that your waste is disposed of legally? So the first thing is the fact that you must ensure that the contractor you employ has a current upper tier registration and a valid permit and their registration number should start with the letters C for Charlie, B for Bertie, D for Delta, E for Uniform, followed by a series of numbers. And in England, you can check whether or not this is a registered company on the Environment Agency's public register of waste carriers, brokers and dealers. And also this website is actually useful for finding a registered carrier in your area. Now, although there isn't any legal requirement to keep records to prove that you've actually carried out your due diligence and made these checks, if your waste is subsequently fly tipped, this will be valuable evidence to prove to an enforcement officer that you have discharged your duty of care. Now, I'm going to give you a few examples of the sort of evidence you can use to confirm that you have discharged your duty of care. Clearly, make records of any checks you've made, including details of the operator's registration, permit or exemption number, keep copies of emails and texts, keep receipt for the transaction which should include the business details of a registered operator. Also ask for copies or take photographs of the carrier's waste registration or site permit. I mean, obviously you can use your mobile phone for this. Now you should also take records of any vehicles used to remove your waste. You could take, for example, a photo with your phone and importantly, make a note of the registration number, the make, model and the colour of the vehicle concerned so that it can be traced back to the operator. Now, what happens if you fail to meet your duty of care? Well, it's a criminal offence not to take all reasonable measures to discharge your duty of care. If you don't, then you could face prosecution and receive a very hefty fine and also end up with a criminal record. And you could also be given a fixed penalty notice as an alternative to a court hearing. But also this is going to be for the more minor offences. So basically now that you're in the know, you will be able to keep both yourself, your family and also other members of the public safe and also protect the environment. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.